All right. So, are you ready? All right. So, I hope you guys are ready. It's uh, I was. I'm hoping it will be a short message, but I don't think I can do a short message. I always love to talk too much, but uh, <laughs> I hope you're excited for God's word. Oh, ito yung kainan. This is what, when we feed. Oh, ito yung kainan. Yung mga JCRCM, we are known to be, you know, to love feeding. Uh, uh, well, ano na it's, a, it's a trait of our church, and I think uh, it's a good thing. Uh, but in, in this case, we are now going to feed on God's word. Uh, uh, so, yan ang spiritual food natin ngayong hapon. And uh, I hope but if, that we will all be blessed. Uh, I was blessed as I study this, and I, I, uh, I hope you will be blessed as we study it together. Uh, I hope God, I, my, my prayer is that God will touch your heart in a certain way, and it will open your eyes and start you on your journey if you have not yet started to follow Jesus. And if you are a, big, a starting believer in Jesus Christ, I hope this will cause you to be, to be built up, that the person that you received into your life is the living God, as you know, Kuya Arnold has, has uh, taken up last time. He is a living God. Buhay siya. We do not believe a dead, a dead prophet. We believe in a living Savior. That was taken by the early Christians and many Christians through many generations to their death. Dinalala nito sa kanilang libingan. Kung hindi totoo yun, I don't know what. Nobody can do that. Oh. So we'll, we'll pray before we start. Oh. Our loving God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this opportunity to open your word. We ask, O oh Lord, and conf we confess to you, Lord, that without you, without the working of your Holy Spirit in our hearts, Without your initiation in our, in our hearts, we will be unable to grasp what you have for us today. We will be unable to digest what you have for us today. We will be unable, Lord, to, to just move according to your will. Lord, we give you thanks. We, we pray for your Holy Spirit that you would guide us as we open your word, guide our minds and our hearts. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will cleanse our minds and our hearts from things that will distract us from, from enjoying the food, that spiritual food that you have prepared for us today. Lord, I, I commit to you, Lord, my preparations supersede it any which way you want. Lord, it is yours. We commit it to you. And Lord, we, we need your presence. We confess that we need you at this very moment in time. And without you, Father God, Nothing will be accomplished. It will be worth anything in eternity. We give you thanks as well for this opportunity, for bringing us all together for the past, for the past week's blessings and for how you have sustained us even through the many challenges we have encountered the past week. For how faithful you are in our lives. That you continue, Lord, to sustain your family here at JCRCM. For providing for this place for providing so many resources that we enjoy in this country, for providing for the freedom to talk about you without fear. We thank you, Father God. We lift up to you. We honor you before anything is done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Sabi niyo sa katabi niyo, I thank the Lord for your life. I, huh? I thank the Lord for your life. Uh, huh? uh -oh. Uh, we, we should, you know, as a church, um, be good to express that. You know, if you think about it, uh, I'm 51, and uh, my parents passed away when they were 74. How long do I have to go? Uh, we should not miss that opportunity to be thankful for each other's lives here at JCRCM. We are not a perfect church, far from it. We are not perfect. But we must learn to thank each other for what we have. We, we are a blessed church, if you think about it. You know, we enjoy this wonderful place. And, you know, we are here in this. Alam mo yung mga kamaganak ng misis ko sa Amerika eh. Bucket list lang nila yung New Zealand. You know, when they hear about New Zealand, they say, oh, that's my bucket list. And we are here. You know, 
we are, we are so we are blessed in in so many ways that <laughs> we cannot count. Uh, so uh, we are we and that is something we should really be you know doing is being thankful just for you know what we have. And so um, let's go. <laughs> so uh, I'll I'll do a, a quick review before we read the scriptures. Malino ba? Do we need to darken the darken the lights? Uh, medyo ano bang na adjustion anyway. Uh, kita ba? I hope you have a uh, bright eyes. Uh, Tayo sa harap, kaya ini-invite namin dito kayo sa first class. Ha? <laughs> Libre naman yung lipat ng city. Uh, um, as a quick review, uh, we are we are uh, we have just launched the the book uh, the letters of uh, uh, Peter and uh, Last time, I just gave an uh, introduction of who Peter is in ano yung background nito, historical background. I hope you still recall it. This is a time when Christians were really pressed, uh, pressed by in all, on, from all sides, uh, uh, from the Jews to the Romans to everybody around them, you know, uh, pressing down on them uh, through persecution. And this is the context, this is the setting where when Peter writes this. He himself was in the midst of this persecution. He wasn't writing to some guys na malayo sa kanya. He was in the midst of the, the times ng pinipiga yung mga Kristiyano from all sides. Time ni Nero, na sinisindihan yung mga Kristiyano na, na parang sulo. Ginagawa silang sulo. Alam nyo ba yung sulo? You know what the uh, torch is, you know? And tradition has it that soon after these letters, Peter was captured and executed. And tradition has it that it was so bad that he was forced to watch his wife be crucified before he was. That is the kind of setting, that is the kind. <laughs> Wala tayo ron, malayo tayo ron. That if, what we ever we experience here, mani, panis <laughs> to what they faced back then. And that is the Peter who is writing to us, to the churches, and to us today. That was the setting. So, and then uh, Kuya Arnold uh, was gracious to uh, talk about the living hope. I just said that, that this, the Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, who walked the earth 2,000 years ago, who walked among his people, who taught and healed people, who died and resurrected, is our living hope. We do not worship a distant God. But a God who came among us, a God who walked on the earth 2,000 years ago, nang sa ganun makilala natin siya, who He is. That is such a great privilege for us Christians that we sometimes take it for granted. That the God, the indescribable, uncomprehensible God, takes the trouble to go to planet Earth, to walk among the people, to teach among the people, so that, the peop so that we will have that relationship with Him. He goes to the cross to pay the penalty for our, all of our sins, so that we can have that living relationship with the living God. That's who our living hope is. That's what Kuya Arnold talked about last time. He is not the distant God. He is the living God. And He is the one who dwells in each and every person's heart as they receive Him as their Lord and Savior. Manina, mananahan siya sa bawat puso ng sino mang magbubukas ng puso at magbibigay ng buhay sa kanya. That is 
a mind-blowing thing. Kung iisipin nyo, totoo ba yun? How is that even possible? Yet for those who have received Him, to them, He gave the right to be children of God. Nagpakilala siya. And I hope you are experiencing that at this moment. I hope, to sa mga ating mga uh, bagong kaibigan, that you will get experience that kung hindi nyo pa siya na-experience. Kung hindi nyo pa nakikilala yung, yung, uh, yung uh, pinag-uusapan natin dito, I hope you will, God will touch your heart today uh, and uh, have, get the chance to uh, experience Him. So, tayo tumayo, we'll just, we'll just rise and, and read this together as a sign of respect. Uh, uh, this is the scripture we have for us today. I'll be ta- we'll be uh, doing verses, chapter 1, verses 6 to 9. We'll read it together in the New Living Translation. So let's start. So, be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Oops. Ayaw mandar, naka-on ba? Sorry. Ayaw, naka-off. Sorry, ayun. You love Him even though you have never seen Him. Though you do not see Him now, you trust Him. And you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting Him will be the salvation of your souls. Sa Tagalog. Ayan, ha? <laughs> Nako, maliit. Sorry. Uh, Kung yung malilino mata, kaya pa to. Okay? So, ito'y dapat nyong ikagalak. Kahit na maaaring magdanas muna kayo ng iba't ibang pagsubok sa loob ng maikling panahon. Ang ginto bagamat nasisira ay, pinapa, ay pinapadaan sa apoy upang malaman kung talagang dalisay. Gayunman, ang inyong pananampalataya na higit na mahalaga kaysa sa ginto ay sinusubok upang malaman kung ito'y talagang tapat. At gayon, kayo'y papupurihan, dadakilain at pararangalan sa araw ng, mahal ni, na, ng mahayag si Heso Kristo. Hindi din nyo siya nakikita, ngunit, ngunit siya'y iniibig nyo. Hindi pa rin nyo siya nakikita hanggang ngayon. Ngunit sumasampalataya kayo sa Kanya. Dahil dito'y nag-uumapaw. Na sa inyong puso ang kagalakan na hindi kayang ilarawan ng salita sapagkat tinanggap na ninyo ang bungang ng inyong pananampalataya ang kaligtasan ng inyong buhay. Let's be seated. Ang ganda sa Tagalog, ano? I'm sure maganda rin ito sa Cebuano. I wish we could do that, but I will, I will expect the, the, the Visayan preachers to do that. Uh, so, all right. So I entitled this, uh, as I was examining this scripture, uh, I was really blessed to, you know, uh, for it to come alive. And so, uh, I entitled it, Purified faith. Purified faith. How does it look like? You know, when God would take away everything that napanlabas sa atin, what will God see? You know, when you're on your deathbed, ano yung aabutan niya ron? Yung wala na tayong panglabas na yung pagmamalaki, ano ang aabutan niya? Anong makikita niya? Kung tatanggalin niya lahat itong nakapaligid sa atin, anong aabutan niya sa ating mga buhay? So, I just got the, uh, 
as we have seen in scripture, you will see this, uh, this is a good image. Now we will start and launch from here. Uh, yan, ano yung itsura na ano yan? Uh, yan yung pag smelt ng ginto o pila. Oh, bakal. Oh, yung mga nagi smelt alam nila yan, familiar sila dyan. Oh. Alright, so yung silver, yung pilak, uh, it's 961 degrees Celsius para matunaw. Alright, 961 degrees Celsius para matunaw. Ah. Hindi pa kukulo yun, matutunaw pa lang. Alright, yung ginto, 1,064 degrees Celsius. Para matunaw. Hindi nyo kayang ilagay yung ginto na yan sa loob ng inyong stove para tunawin dahil ang stove nyo, yung oven nyo ay hanggang 246 degrees lang. <laughs> Hindi kaya. Alright? And that is the imagery. Yan ang ginamit na uh, imagery. Ano ba sa Tagalog yung imagery? Paglalarawan, para maintindihan natin yung pinagdadaanan ng bawat isang kristyano sa kanyang buhay. Nang sa ganun, madalisay ang ating pananampalataya. Nang sa ganun, lumabas lahat ng hindi pure. Okay? Lahat ng dumidumi sa ating pananampalataya, maalis. Alright? Kasi... Mayroon nun eh. <laughs> Di ba obvious? Hanggang hindi natin makatagpo si Kristo, nabubuhay tayo sa mundo ng hindi ganap yun. Kanya nga lang, sinimulan ng, if you have given your life to Jesus, if you have surrendered your heart, opened your heart to Him, say, Lord, I recognize you are you have died on the cross for my sins. And Lord, you are God. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. If in your heart you have realized and, and opened your heart to that truth, then God starts to work with you. He lives in you and starts to transform you into His likeness. Sinimulan niya na ang paghubog sa iyo o ang pagdalisay sa iyong pananampalataya. Hindi siya titigil. He's not gonna stop. Because he is faithful. Alright? Um, hindi ko na ano rito, pero uh, you know that God transforms us. I uh, will do it later. So question for us today. So how do we respond just to bring it down to earth how do we respond when we are faced with stress? Okay? When we encounter a very stressful situation, how do we respond? Kasi doon mo makikita lalabas yung kadalisayan ng ating pananampalataya. How pure our faith is. Lalabas yung alsa yung mga dumidumi. <laughs> Alright? When we face stress, every day we face stress, right? Maraming kasing nakaka-stress. <laughs> sa bahay, sa trabaho, sa church. Marami yan. Sa mga kaibigan, sa pamilya, sa Pilipinas. Marami yan. How do we deal with rejection? How do we deal when people reject us for who we are? Yung pag napagsalitaan ka ng masakit. How do we deal with that? How do we respond to that? I don't know what you are going through personally today. You know, Mapakarami natin dito. But one thing that I can sport a guess no, pwede kong sabihin na lahat tayo ay dumaraanas ng kahit pa paano. Isa, is, isa sa mga bagay na ito sa ating pang-araw-araw na walk with the Lord. 
I can, I can support the guess that, you know, all of us experience this in our lives. I don't know your personal experience at the moment, but I can support a guess you're passing through one of these. Maaring hindi stress, pero maaring kalungkutan. Loneliness. How do we respond to loneliness? Yung ikay nag-iisa sa buhay. Parang bang walang nakakaintindi sa'yo. Para bang walang nagmamahal sa'yo. How do we deal with that? How does our faith respond to that? How do we respond to temptation? Yung pang-aakit na gumawa ng masama. <laughs> ng hindi tama. How do, does our faith respond to that? How do we respond to criticism? Yung kapag ka <laughs> sinabihan ka ng totoo naman, pero hindi maganda. Doon lalabas yung kadalisaya ng ating pananampalataya. Do we give up? And, of course, disappointment. Kapag hindi naganap yung gusto mo sanang maganap. Kapag kung hindi mo nakita yung gusto mo sanang nakita. Kung hindi nangyari yung gusto mo sanang mangyari. How, do, how does our faith respond to that? Take note that our Lord Jesus Christ faced all of this. Etc. Etc. Another question is, how would that purified look like someday? Ano magiging, ano yung hinahanap na end product? Dinescribe siyang ginto. Ano yung itsura ng ginto na yun? Uh, ano yung dalisay? Ano ang itsura ng dalisay na ginto? How does pure gold look like? How does pure silver look like? Talking about our faith when it is purified. All right, so, and the other question related to this is, how can I face trials with an enduring faith? That is what the setting is for this letter. Facing trials with an enduring faith. You know, when Peter and the early Christians were facing the persecution of Nero and so on and so forth for the next 200 years, Sabi ko nga, anong itsura nun? If I were to describe it, if you read the letter, just look at it for a moment, spend some time just looking at the words. Peter was like, uh, my description is, walking down the boarding tube of his airplane headed to heaven. Yun ang aking ano. Para bagang lumalakad siya ng walang takot sa kanyang paruroonan. That is enduring faith. Sa kabila ng mga nakapaligid sa kanya at nangyayari, Peter walked down that boarding tube to face what God had for him. That is enduring faith. So we will encounter some keywords. Faith. We will examine what it is as in the scripture. All right? We all have ideas of faith. All right? But we will want to take it from God's word. And then this is related to spiritual maturity. All right? Each and every one of us, if you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have opened your life to Him, decided that you, I'm in, Lord, 
have heard the call that Jesus has said, follow me. It's now on a journey to spiritual maturity. God transforms us or matures us. Tayo ay lumalago o uh, ano ba yung maturity? Nagiging magulang. <laughs> Parang kita tayo magulang. Ano? Uh, tayo ay lumalago sa ating paglakad in our walk with the Lord by several things. Very important is the word. God transforms us by the renewing of our mind through His Word. That's why it's important that we spend time in God's Word. Diyan niya tayo mababago eh. Hindi niya tayo mabago kung hindi natin alam, hindi natin alam kung ano yung sinasabi niya. Kung ano yung gusto niya at mali. Dahil hindi tayo nag-aaral ng kanyang salita. Kung walang halaga yung salita sa atin ng Panginoon, then there's a big question mark in our lives. Kasi iyaan dyan niya tayo babaguhin. So I'm so happy that you are all here in church and we can talk about this. We want to eat together. And the other is circumstances. May mga kaganapan sa ating buhay at ginagamit ng, pan- ng Panginoon ang lahat ng kaganapan sa ating buhay upang tayo ay mahubog. Kaya niyang gamitin yon. Masaya, mahirap. Kaya niyang gamitin yon. Kaya nga, sa isang kristyano, ang masasabi ko, wala na yung luck. Hin- Kung maiintindihan nyo lang, wala na yung luck. Alright? Dahil yahang lahat ng dumaraan sa ating buhay ay dumaan sa kamay, makikita niyo dumaan sa kamay ng ating ama. Maganda, mahirap, di maganda, masama. Masakit, Dumaan lahat yan sa kamay ng ating Panginoon. Nang sa ganoon tayo ay mahubog. Hindi naman tayo 24 hours nag-aaral ng Biblia, kaya ginagamit ng Panginoon yung mga pangyayari sa ating buhay. Nang sa ganoon mahubog tayo kasi araw-araw may nangyayari. <laughs> Matrapi ka lang. Hindi ka ninang umaga, hindi umanda rin sa sakya namin, nakasakay na kami lahat. Naku, nadiskarga ang baterya. Maraming mga circumstances that God allows us to makikita natin that God is, allows these things para matransform. Makita mo na dinadalisay niya yung faith mo. So, my, 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 uh, my call to us this afternoon is open your eyes. God is at work in your life. Hear that God is at work in your life. And He also uses people. Kanya nga, Hindi uubra yung nanonood lang tayo ng TV o YouTube nang sa'yo yung lumago. Kailangan mayroon tayong kaugnayan sa ating mga kapatid at sa ibang tao. Oh, hindi natin mapapractice yung one another, yung love one another, kung wala tayong kapatid na mamahalin. Yung forgive one another, kung wala tayong kapatid na patatawarin. Yung help one another, kung wala tayong kapatid na tutulungan. Encourage one another kung wala tayong kapatid na uh, sasalina ng kalakasan. So we will examine faith. All right? Sa pagkaka-translated, when this is translated in Greek, ginamit yung word na pistis. Parang piste. Pero pistis. Pistis sa Greek. Uh, pistis. All right? Faith yun. Huh? Oh, faith. I, when I examined this, uh, the definition that I got was, oh, really, uh, I hope you will appreciate this and I hope I will come across and deliver this faithfully that we will all learn and enjoy it. All right? Dito, it, the word pistis or that uh, in Greek or faith is called a div- God's divine persuasion. Whew. God's divine persuasion. All right? It is God's divine persuasion, therefore distinct from human belief or confidence, yet involving it. The Lord continuously births faith 
in the yielded believer so that they can know what he prefers. It is the persuasion of his will. You can see that in, in the scripture. Tidinig lang kung ano ba yung persuasion sa Tagalog nang sa ganun maintindihan natin ng mas madali. What is this persuasion? What is this God's divine persuasion that we call faith? Yung mapasang-ayon yung puso mo. Kapag narinig mo yung sinasabi sa Bible, kaya nga masasabi natin, very central is God's word and delivering His message. Kapag narinig mo yan at naintindihan mo yan, at tumimo sa puso mo, at napasang-ayong ka, na ang tinasabi niya ay dapat nating sundin, that's what Kuya Jonathan just said, the seeds of faith. That is the hope that we want for our children. Nang tumimo yung, tumama sa puso nila yung katotohanan ng Diyos. At sumang-ayo ng kanilang puso that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. That He won our victory. That He died on the cross for our sins. And we are fully paid to anyone who would trust Him. Ang pagsunod ng puso mo sa Panginoon. Sino nagsimula nun? Tayo ba? Ang Diyos. Kaya nga, wala tayong ipagmamalaki sa harap niya. Faith is not like, I like to illustrate it, faith is not like a toothpaste, it's not like toothpaste that you squeeze it hard enough, it will come out. Kahit anong piga mo sa puso mo, para sumunod sa Panginoon, sabihin natin, faith, Pero hindi pa yun. Hindi yun ang hina. Hindi yun ang inihintay. Kanya nga maraming taong nagsusumikap ng sa ganon, mabayaran nila ang kanilang mga kasalanan patungong langit. Na maging karapat dapat sila sa harap ng Panginoon. At ng sa gayon, sila itanggapin ng Panginoon. Para ba? Lord! Hindi ka ba? Kahit anong iri mo, <laughs> <laughs> Hindi yun ang iniintay ng Panginoon sa atin. Kanya nga maraming tao na patuloy na nagsusumikap, hindi na iintindihan. Hindi na babago. Dahil hindi ka pa umayon doon sa sinabi ng Panginoon sa iyo. Akin lang ito. Is, did I just come up with This is what I come up with. It is what God does and puts in a person's, puts into and produces or initiates in a man's heart that causes him to move. That causes him or her to trust God as he learns his truth. Doon mababago yung puso mo. That is what will start a new heart. Do we take credit for it? No, we don't. Because it is God's initiation sa buhay mo. When Peter confessed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Messiah, Jesus' response to him was, <laughs> Hindi galing sa'yo yan. It did not come from you. God has spoken to your heart to realize that the man he was talking to is the Messiah, the God-man who walked the earth, prepared to die for us. That gives us a new heart that sets us into repentance. Kaya mababago ang buhay mo. Dahil sumang-ayo na ang puso mo sa sinasabi ng Panginoon. That's why we see changed lives. That's why we have Bible studies. That's to expose people to the truth and allow, the, allow God to speak through His Word. Are you with me? Okay, nandito pa tayo lahat ha? 
And it, we change our direction. Si God ang nagsisimula niyan. Hindi natin kayang pigain. Although it involves our will. Kasali ka eh. Pero si God ang nagsimula. So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Kaya hindi natin maihiwalay sa salita niya yung ating pananampalataya. I just highlighted some things that uh, for us to see saan nang gagaling si Peter nang isulat niya to. How Peter with his enduring faith was writing this and he was using this imagery. All right. Ano yung mga elemento, if you would say, uh, for us to see this enduring faith? All right. In I light koron. Uh, so truly be glad. There is a one. There is wonderful joy ahead. Masasabi ni Peter yan. Pinipiga sila. There is wonderful joy ahead. Even though you must endure many trials for a little while. Sandali lang. Sandali na lang. Wag kayong masi- maog masira ang loob nyo. Yan ang maikita mo dyan. These trials must, will show that your faith is genuine. Wag kayong panghinaan ang loob. Yan mga pagsusubok na yan ang magdadalisay sa inyong pananampalataya. It is being tested as fire tests, tests and purifies gold. As in highlight ko rito, this, uh, let me backtrack, so when your faith remains strong through these many trials, it will bring much you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You hinailay ko dyan, reveal something about what this enduring faith has. How can we have, siguro sabihin na natin, let's be practical about it. How can we have this enduring faith? How can we see it in our lives? And then here, Look at this. Peter says, it is the reward for trusting Him. The reward for trusting Him will be the salvation of your souls. Binobola lang ba niya yung mga Kristiyanong nakaipit doon at susunugin? Sige! He was not. Hindi siya yung parang si Karl Marx na <laughs> Okay lang, mamatay kayong lahat para sa kawas ako. He is saying something here. He has something that will cause him to say, dahil kasama siya ron sa pinipiga. He is not a stranger to this persecution. He is part. He is in the midst of it. That is keeping an eternal focus. Ayun, no? The salvation of your souls. Kailan mangyayari yan? Pag natagpo na natin si Jesus. Kapag dumating na siya, makikita mo na na yung pinag-uusapan natin dito ay totoo. He was forward thinking. Sinasabi niya, a little while, how does this life compare to eternity? 70, 80, 90 years, how does that compare to eternity? kung makakasama, magkakasama mo si Jesus sa magkikita kita tayo sa langit. How does that compare? Kaya niya nasasabi yan because he was keeping an eternal perspective. Ano man nangyayari sa buhay mo ngayon, my brothers, I encourage you, keep an eternal perspective. Maikli lang itong buhay na to. Don't give up. All right, so he's keeping an eternal perspective. That's very important for that enduring faith, for that pure faith. All right, recognize that God is in complete control. All right, and He loves you. He went to the cross for you. Balik adun. Go back to the cross. If you doubt God's love, go back to the cross. 
That's how much He loves you. Kung nagdududa ka, mahal ka pa ng Panginoon, o iniwang ka na ng Panginoon, go back to the cross. He loves you. He has secured a place for you in His kingdom. At kung hindi mo pa naibigay yung puso mo, I encourage you, let these words speak to you. Give your heart to Jesus. He loves you. And there is a great reward for trusting Him. You will be in for more than what you bargained for. Yung, mag- yung magiging adventure mo as a Christian ay hindi mo, kaya, hindi mo, ma- ma- may hindi mo inimagine na may ganun pala. Am I speaking the truth? Do you realize that there is an amazing journey? And that is salvation. Maliligtas ka. I'll just go through the scripture and let it speak to you. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. This is Paul writing. This is echoing what Paul Peter just said. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and it will last forever. Those who will believe in Jesus Christ recognize this. Na yung sinimula ng Panginoon sa ababat buhay ng isang mananampalataya, though for those who have given their hearts, matindi yun. Ang halaga nun, higit pa sa ginto. In Romans 8.18, Yet, what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory He will reveal to us later. Nothing compared. Wala to. All right. And then we go to verse 7. So this is the word I got the, the picture from. And uh, so you see that he was keeping a, 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 an eternal perspective. Here now is the next part. I was, I was examining the scripture. This is what we, we can see here. Mababakas mo. You can see it. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. And what does it bring? Much praise, glory, and honor. In verse uh, nine. Uh, verse seven, yeah. Verse, part of verse seven, later part. So, the other thing we can learn is that we must remember that God has a purpose for all of these trials. Eternal perspective and remember God has a purpose for the trials. Peter knew that whatever he was going to encounter at the end of that boarding tube, God has a purpose for it. Kung ano man yung pinagdadaanan niya, God has a purpose for it. Can I say to you this afternoon, ano man ang pinagdadaanan mo ngayon, God has a purpose for it. Hang in there. Steady ka lang. It purifies our faith. Batid ni Peter, Peter can see it that whatever is going on around us, God has a purpose and it's His purpose is to purify our faith. Nang maalis na yung dumi-dumi sa ating pananampalataya. And it eventually will bring honor to God in the last day if it not brings honor to God already as you trust Him. Nakikita mo yun doon sa verse 7. Okay? The Bible echoes this. It says here, Fire tests the purity of silver and gold, but the Lord what? Tests the heart. God has a purpose. But he knows where I am going and when he tests me, I will come out as pure gold. Si Job yan. This is Job. If you're familiar with the life of Job, 
This is a person who was squeezed. And he knew that he would come out as pure gold as he trusts the Lord. Maraming things na hindi naintindihan ng mga kaibigan niya. I feel familiar with the book. Kung ano-ano mga theory natin why a person undergoes, undergoes trials. Marami tayong theory, ah, kasi ganun yan eh. But none of them are right. God was just purifying the faith of Job. I have refined you, but not as silver is refined. Rather, I have refined you in the furnace of suffering. Alam nyo ba yung, yung ginto, hindi mo pwedeng ilagay sa, sa basong, sa baso, kahit yung baso na yun ay gawa sa bakal, kung siya'y dadalisayin mo. If you're going to refine gold, you cannot even put it in a, on a piece of metal because that piece of metal will melt before the gold melts. That is how hot the fire or the temperature that has to be reached para matunaw yung ginto. Ngayon din yung ating trial sa buhay. Sometimes it's, he will use extreme heat so that our faith will be removed of its dross. Ano ba, ano ba yung mga impurities na yan? Kung may mga buha-buhangin dun sa ginto na yun, aalsa yun, matutunaw yun, ah, maaalis yun. I, I, naghahanap ako sana ng YouTube video para makita nyo kung paano dinadali sa yung ginto. That is an amazing... <laughs> Pag makikita mo, hit talaga, matindi. Matindi ka po. Alam nung mga nag-i-smell dyan. It's very dangerous even. You cannot even use metal because the metal will melt. <laughs> kung ginto ang pinag-uusapan. In James, it says here, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come to your come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Great joy? Problema? He's not being masochist. He's being he's saying in the midst of trouble, he can have that great joy. Hindi siya nag hindi siya natutuwa na may problema. But in the midst of that problem, he can have great joy. Knowing na may purpose si Lord. Yung Kristiyano hindi masokista. But he can have great joy in the midst of trials. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has the chance to grow. Recognize that God is producing endurance in your life. Ano mo na pinagdadaanan mo? God is producing endurance in your life. That's why you can say, Praise the Lord. I'm still here. God, you are still with me. You love him even though you have never seen him. This is another element. So the first one is keeping an eternal perspective. All right? The second one is recognizing that God is, has a purpose for this. And then here is quite an interesting part of the, of the passage that you will see something. I saw something anyway. You love him even though you have never seen him. He's speaking to these Christians who are persecuted. You, though you do not see him now, you trust him. And you rejoice with a glorious, what? Inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him with the salvation of Jesus. What is going on here? How can Peter write this? He recognizes that he is not alone. If you are a Christian, recognize that you are not alone. That is one of the greatest experiences a Christian has. We are not exempt from problems, trials, sickness, disasters, tragedy. The only big difference is that we are not alone. Na experience na ba yan? And it is in the midst of the heaviest, hardest trials that we experience our greatest worship, our deepest 
prayers. Hindi na yung maraming salitang prayers. Hindi yung, Lord, help! Aray, Lord! Ang sakit! Di ba dalisa yun? Isn't that a pure prayer? That's pure. We are not alone. And that's why these guys can love the one who have, they have not seen. I remember my, my, my son Daniel, he would say, Lord, how, Dad, how can we believe God? We don't even see Him. Parents, you must be able to answer that question. Alam mo, na-challenge ako na naging sagot ko, sabi ko lang, Anak, we do not see God, but we see what He does, and we see what He has made. He's there, He's alive. Recognize that you are not alone. That is the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. Nasasamahan ka. You know, when you are undergoing trials, it is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with you. He lives within you. So may kasama ka. Kahit iitsa ka pa sa apoy o iitsa ka pa sa den ng lions, may kasama ka. As believers before us, Moses and Daniel have experienced. That's the Holy Spirit. Am I making sense? I hope so. All right. It draws us closer to God. All right. Those pure situations, those high heat situations, those pure prayer situations draw you closer to God. Sometimes when things are going easy, we think we're close to God. Easy eh, dali eh. Thank you Lord. Dali eh. Pero pag ayan na ang pigaan, ayan na ang mahirap intindihin, ayan na ang mahirap lampasan, recognize that that is an opportunity for you to pray pure prayers. and that results in inexpressible joy. Di mo kayang, <laughs> ano ba inexpressible sa Tagalog? Di mo kayang arukin. Hindi mo maintindihan. Hindi ka pa iniwan ng Panginoon. Hindi ka pa tinalikuran. And it produces thanksgiving. In a, alam mo, isa, one of the great marks of, of a Christian, of a believer in Jesus Christ, is a thankful heart. Nagpapasalamat. An overflowing, inexpressible joy. Napagpasalamat. I will just read some more scriptures and hopefully we'll be able to digest all of this. So again, keep an eternal perspective. Recognize that God has a purpose for what you're going through. All right, every day. And yeah, nandito na tayo. Yeah, na. So uh, we can rec- when we can recognize too, says the Romans, we can recognize too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. Mababago ka, titibay ka, and the character strengthens our conf- confident hope in salvation. At kapag nakita mo sa buhay mo yung binago ka na ng Panginoon, lalo kang mananampalataya na ang sinabi niya ay tutuparin niya. In Galatians 5, 6, For when we place our faith in Jesus Christ, there is no benefit in being circumcised or uncircumcised. What is important is faith expressing itself in love. Lalabas yun. Faith expresses itself in love. And that's what's important. 
kapag ang puso mo ay sumang-ayon sa Panginoon at nang dahil sa pagsang-ayon mo sa Panginoon, kumilos ka. Ang lumabas, love. Love never gives up. It never loses faith. It is always hopeful. It endures through every circumstance. Romans 8.17 And since we are His children, we are His heirs, in fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we share in His glory, we must also share in His suffering. In Hebrews 5, 8 and 9. Even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. In this way, God qualified him as a perfect high priest and he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Jesus himself learned obedience through suffering. Hebrews. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Second Corinthians. But we Christians have no veil over our faces. Tinanggal na yung talukbong. We can be mirrors that brightly reflect the glory of God. And as the Spirit of the Lord works in us, works within us, we become more and more like Him. You know, there's a saying that sa mga sanay sa, sa, sa jewelry, paano nilang malalaman kung puro na yung ginto o puro na yung pilak, yung pilak kasi mas mababa yung temperature, kaya mas madaling initin yung madaling matunang. Paano nilang malalaman yung kung puro na yung pilak? Ang sinasabi noong mga ano is, kapag nakita na nung, noong nagdadalisay nung pilak, yung muka nila. When their image is seen as a reflection of that gold and silver. Uh, yan, ang, yan ang kasabihan. Kapag nakita na noong nag noong nagdadalisay doon sa pananampalataya mo ang reflection niya puro na. Does that blow your mind. It blew my mind. So conclusion. This purified faith, how does it look like? It has an eternal focus. That is an enduring Kaya nagkakaroon ng endurance. It knows the purpose of suffering. Peter, towards the end of his life, knew the purpose of suffering. And as brothers and sisters, know the purpose of suffering. That is the one thing that the world does not understand. They question the existence of God. And sometimes we do too. It overflows with joy and thanksgiving. Si Jesus nung pumunta sa cross yun, joy. Hindi siya tumatawa, pero may joy. This is going to bring you and me to heaven. And he knew he was not alone. Know that you are not alone. And it shows itself as love and pure worship. Pure worship. And it will reflect Jesus. Let's pray. 
Our wonderful, loving God, how wonderful is your word. And Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to examine your word. And we ask, oh, Father God, that these truths would strike deep within our hearts. That you would continue and that we would see that you have not left us. That we would that you would develop in us an enduring faith. A pure faith. One day, oh Father God, you would see to your glory this pure faith. We give you thanks, Father God. Bless your people as we have consumed, oh Father God, your word. Strengthen us. Give us joy and thankfulness. Give us love, Lord as you can only pour that into our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.